Welcome back to another edition of From the Tackle Box, a Knife Chats with Tobias special. Welcome to another edition of From the Tackle Box, and today what I'm going to be looking at are a bunch of floating fish knives. Uh, and I'm going to start with this one right up here at the top, the Big Fisherman, which is actually, if you see here, there's a little thing on there that says Florida. So I think this is a souvenir of Florida. I don't know. Uh, this is one of the ones, this is probably my favorite out of the group because I really like the fish that's on there and big fishermen, like, <laughs> trust me, I'm not a big fisherman. Uh, well, I like the fish, but catching is a different story. In any case, this one kind of, well, these are all made in Japan and this one just kind of reminds you of that little samurai, you know, a little tanto carried by the samurais and you open it up and you got the patented stainless steel uh, floating fish knife blade and you see here floating fish knife Japan and it's got a nice Haman line going on and uh, actually it's fairly sharp I'll tell you that much too um, overall length of the blade is uh, right at four and a half inches a little over four and a half inches you got a cutting edge on this blade that's right at three and a half inches and yeah, then you got the scaling portion there that's a little over two and a half inches and obviously you've got your bottle opener now if you close this all up oops doing it wrong i should know everything is on the front side the knife is approximately 10 inches long which is typical of these uh, wooden floating fish knives that came out of Japan. I think these all date from the uh, late 50s all the way through the 60s and into the 70s. Um, like I said, this is probably my favorite out of them. Uh, and it's really the simplest of all of them. Uh, the blade steel, uh, I have no idea. I'm guessing it's either a 440 or a 420, more likely 420. You notice there that uh, it's got a couple nicks at the top. These knives are actually used quite often. Uh, you'd be surprised at how many fishermen actually use these things. Uh, I'm not sure how well they float in the water. Well, I, I know they do float, but, you know, I don't know how well you're going to be able to fish them back out of the water. <clears throat> and speaking of fish, the next two I have are actually looking like fish. This one's the shorter of the two. It's only nine inches long. Um, and again a souvenir of florida i think a lot of these are souvenirs of florida you got the fish mouth here and the eyeball on the front and then a little fish tail in the back the the back of it kind of reminds me of the way open elk cuts their knives too which is interesting in any case this one oh, almost cut myself this one has a little uh, hook remover tip going on for it you still got your bottle opener and then a scaler and these scalers um, are actually pretty sharp too. Uh, again, floating fish knife, and then on the back side here, stainless steel Japan. This one has a much shorter blade. The blade is only four inches long overall, with a cutting edge that's about two and three quarter inches, and a scaler that's under two inches. But you got the bottle opener. That's the important thing. Um, now the other one is a little bit longer. Um, this one, um, when I first picked it up, it looked like crap. So what I did was I sanded it down, repainted the eye, repainted the mouth, even, uh, and then I, uh, rubbed some paint into the, uh, the floating fish knife portion there, sanded it down with, uh, like, a about a two or three thousand grit sandpaper, so to get all the, uh, excess paint off of it. And then, uh, I stained it, um, a bamboo colored uh, stain and then gave it several coats of uh, a gloss coat so that it'll stand up to it uh, so I had to repair this one but I like the way it looks uh, this one has your standard blade on it nothing fancy about it same blade that you find in that one only marks slightly different but it's another one that's a fish knife and you always got to make sure you get them in there right uh, and then the last one is the ones that are the most famous. I, I've got two of these. One of them is just kind of plain. You don't know you're for honest, dishonest fishermen. This one, uh, the top one's the legal inches, and then on the back side, dishonest inches or 
illegal inches for the dishonest fishermen. This one is the one you see in a lot of my videos. It's the one that has all the little uh, pictograms on there. I don't know what kind of fruit that is. And uh, it looks like some kind of angelfish, some water skiers. Uh, looks like a shrimp boat. And then you got your marlin and then somebody uh, down here uh, feeding a dolphin. On the back side, a few things showing up also uh, in different orders. But you're missing, um, what are you missing? Let's see, something is missing, I thought. You're missing the shrimp boat on the back side. So now these are pretty cool knives because, well, you see the length. It's pretty easy to tell the length of it because uh, it's marked off on it. And so you got a knife that is 10 inches long. And then you've got a blade in it, which is pretty cool too because you've got a blade in it that is uh, almost 10 inches long with a cutting edge that comes in right at uh, seven, eight inches long and a, um, the uh, scaler on the top is almost six inches long. So I don't know how they do it, but they manage to cram a blade that's 10 inches long into a knife that's only 10 inches long. So that's pretty cool. And that's really the, the, the big selling point for these knives. I think that's why so many people bought them back in the 50s and 60s because you had such a big blade on on such a you know on just a 10 inch knife when you got it in your tackle box and if you notice that's also something you see with these um the uh knives they're not they're not a scabbard or anything well they're just a scabbard they're not a sheath these are designed to be tossed into the tackle box you're not going to be actually carrying them on your waist belt or anything because there's no way to do that so they're designed to be tossed into the tackle box now i've got one more left to show you and that is this one it looks very similar to the other floating fish knives uh, but it's a little bit longer instead of being 10 inches long as you can see there this one comes in at um, probably about 10 and a half inches and it's got the blade down here starting at the seven inch mark um, and it's got a different uh, style of blade because notice it doesn't have the uh, the uh, bottle opener it's just got the scaler and the cutting edge and that's because on this end <clears throat> you also have something to weigh your fish and once again as you can see for honest and dishonest fishermen red is in uh, for dishonest uh, and the blue is in honest and on here you see red going and I don't know if you're going to be able to read the numbers but it goes all the way out to 30 pounds, 30 um, dishonest pounds, or in white, it goes all the way out to 15 honest pounds. So you can weigh some pretty heavy fish with this thing. Uh, and that's uh, the other one that I have, the uh, honest, dishonest uh, floating fish knife with a, uh, a, a scale for weighing your fish. And, um, so there you have it. These are my uh, floating fish knives, at least the wooden ones that were made in Japan. I have some other floating fish knives. I'll show you those in a different video. But these are the ones that were really big back in the 50s and 60s. And this is the one you see in a lot of my uh, videos because, you know, it's got a ruler on it. So why not just go ahead and use it? Uh, why not use a, a knife for measuring all my other knives? Uh, and that's what I do. In any case, there you have it. Uh, another thing from, uh, from my tackle box, my wooden floating fish knives from Japan. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode of Knife Chats. And if you did, please like and share it with your friends. Comments are always welcome. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode of Knife Chats is up online. Thanks again. Hope to see you soon.